Hello frugal friends, I hope you are all well, I hope you had a lovely, lovely Christmas and were busy and happy and everything was okay for you. <sighs> so we've got Christmas food left over, we have got most of everything of the roast, you know, most things, nothing got completely eaten. Uh, we did finish off our cauliflower cheese though yesterday because it's so delicious but we've got loads of stuff left so we are going to make as i mentioned before christmas if you've watched my other video scraggy pie so i have got bits of ends of pastry left over from different recipes that i've made i've got a couple of short crust pastry pieces and i've got some puff pastry as well not homemade though puff pastry great can make it I haven't got the time in my life to make it because it's such a faff to make Anyway, so we're going to make what I like I say called scraggy pie because we're using the scrag ends of um, pastry that we've got. We're going to use our leftover Christmas dinner to make like a bubble and squeak pastry pie. So I've been deep diving in the fridge. This is the stuff we have got left. So in here we've got some roast potatoes, we've got some Yorkshire puddings. These are not the best Yorkshire puddings in the world. These are vegan Yorkshire puddings, so there's no egg in these. I'm still hunting for the best vegan Yorkshire pudding recipe. If you know of one, please, please let me know in the comments. They don't taste bad, but they're more like a cornbread muffin. But, you know, they're, they're fine. So we've got loads of Yorkie, York, roast potatoes left over. In here, I have got, one-handed, some carrot and swede mash, some roasted carrots, a few parsnips left over as well. Under here is... Um, our roast meat, so we used, we used Wicked Kitchen uh, vegan meat, so we've got that there. This was a savoury sweet stuffing that we got from Iceland. Yeah, if you go back and look on my Iceland haul, that's from there. That would, oh, that was amazingly tasty, yummy. Um, some pigs and blankets. I think I might take the blankets off because they got a little bit caught and just use the pigs. And I think this is just normal bit of Paxo, bit of sage and onion stuffing. So that's all going to go in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this up first um, before it goes in the frying pan. I'm going to get my frying pan on now because I want it scorching hot because I want to get a crust on this before it goes in the pie. I've got my bits of pastry. So a slightly softer pastry here. This is what I use for my mince pies. Slightly firmer pastry there. Can't remember what that was from. And I've got an end of a roll of the puff pastry so first things first get the heat on because I want that nice and hot worst thing you can do is put stuff in a cold pan you will not get a nice what I want is a nice sear on the um, bubble and squeak so I've chopped up everything I've put it into this um, dish because I want to give it a good mix get everything um, mushed together so I've got plenty of moisture in there also once I put it in the frying pan I'll be giving everything a bit of a, a squish so I've chopped it up into what smallish pieces so that is now going to go in now traditionally you would have some kind of cabbagey thing in this and I've just realized I've, I've got no sprouts left however I have got a bit of cabbage in the fridge so I think what I'm going to do is just give that a little bit of a slice up throw a little bit of cabbage in there because you've got to have the cabbage for the bubble and squeak I've shredded um, a few leaves of cabbage up really super super fine because with it going in raw um, I didn't want it quite chunky so that's going in there so now we are going to go in here we are going to sizzle and it's going to be fabulous there we go get in there now get in with a spatula and start pressing this down. So the real thing you want with this is a really nice crust. So I'm going to make sure I give it enough time before I start flipping things over. So while that's doing that, I'm going to pack away anything else I've got left and start preparing my pastry. 
So what I did with my pastry, because I had two different types of, well, two different pastries, I've just kind of massaged them together and kneaded them together. And I've rolled it out, but each time I've rolled it out, I've kind of let it rest. Because if you roll the pastry, it, you can see it's starting to creep back. So I want to make sure that when I put it into the pan that I'm going to use, that it's nice and relaxed and it's not going to start shrinking back as soon as I put it in there because I don't want to run out of pastry. So that's ready. So that's going to go into there. Maneuver it across a little bit so that it fits. There we go. Let it sink down. Have we got enough to... Oh yeah, we'll go back a bit that way. A bit more that way. There we go. So that's ready. So I'm just now waiting for this to crisp up, which it should be doing now. So let's have a quick look. There you go, you can start to see crispy caramelisation on there. So I'm going to flip it all over. If you use mash, it'll stick together so much better. But I'm not really wanting a sticking together um, consistency on this. Because I don't want to end up with a really heavy, sticky pie. We're going to be having gravy with it anyway, so I'm not too fussed about it being um, on the drier side. I just want it to be nice and flavourful and a little bit crispy because it's the crispy bits that make it. So, turned all that over, press it down. Oven is on preheating so that we can get this in as soon as it is ready. There we go. I'm going to spin you around here so you can see the pastry. Um, this is the puff that I've got left over, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do the top on that yet. Let's fill this in first, because I want to get this in the oven pretty quickly. This is going to be quite a deep, deep hole pie. There we go. Pop that all in. go. Right, what do I need? Spatula. I'm not going to waste any of that. There we go. Now, pastry wise, I'm just going to kind of do a little tuck and twist on these edges. So we're not going to waste any of that because I can't refreeze that now. It's been frozen once. I don't want to bin it. There's not a massive amount of it. There we go. And then this puff, I could do strips or I might just be lazy and do a couple of pieces on top. Quick cut with a knife. There we go. This is not about pretty. This is about just making sure it's all nice and covered. This is why it's called scraggy pie because it does look a bit scraggy and that is fine. I am going to brush this with a little milk because I have got no eggs left and then we are going to go in the oven at about 180 for probably about 20 minutes basically till the pastry is cooked and this is nice and golden here we go here is our scraggy pie looks actually quite nice doesn't look as scraggy <laughs> in terms of you know it's not totally messy it looks really nice lovely nice and crispy I've got some roast potatoes that I've just reheated in here is a little bit of oh, steamy hot. That's um, dauphinoise potato with onion in because I like onion, my dauphinoise, um, from yesterday because we had something different on Boxing Day as I didn't fancy having a repeat of Christmas Day. Over here, I've just got some gravy. This is just Tesco's onion gravy granules. Really nice. And what I'm going to add to it, just because this is what I would do on Christmas Day anyway, is if I am making gravy, I will add a little bit of cranberry to it. And there we go. So on Christmas day when I made my gravy, the container that I used to make my gravy was the same container I used to make my sage and onion stuffing. And I didn't wash it, so there were bits of sage and onion stuffing in there as well. 
So let's dish up this pie. So I'm going to pull you up so you can see the pie and the plate. Oh, can you hear crunch? I can hear crunch. Um, where's my cloth? Because I know I'm going to burn myself if I try and touch this. So, what do you reckon? A quarter portion should be enough. Is it going to lift? Because it's, oh, yeah, I think we might be all right. Ooh. We'll probably take it out of the thing and put it on a tray, actually. But we are there. Get in there. Come on. Do you know what? I'm going to get my chopping board. Let's put the chopping board on here. Slide it out. There you go. Why make life difficult for yourself? <laughs> that. Oh, smells good. You know, it's always that, there we go. It's always that middle bit that you can't quite. Oh, look, at that, look at that, look at that. Let me just check you can see it. You see it? There you go. Oh, so that's going on there. I'm just going to get a fork. I'm going to get the one out of the cranberry sauce. I'm going to pour some gravy on this. Let me go in closer for you. <gasps> Yummy! Bit of gravy. There we go. Just for tasting purposes, there will be more gravy on this when I actually finish dishing up the plate completely. I've got to get a little bit of that puff pastry as well because that looks so nice. Here we go. Mmm. Scraggy pie. Why wouldn't you? It's roast dinner. It's Christmas dinner. In a pie. All the flavours. All the noms. Mmm. Great. If you make a roast dinner and you've got leftovers... This is perfect for the end of the week. Yummy. Let's see if we can get a better picture of inside there. How does that look? Oh, that's amazing. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to stand here now. And talk about my amazing pie. It's Greggy pie. Please make it. It's delicious. If you make a roast dinner again on New Year's Day, because I know quite a lot of people do, you sort of like repeat Christmas on New Year's Day. Some people have a buffet. I don't even know what we're going to do yet. I think I'm going to have a look at Tesco's and see what's available and then make a decision and have something delicious on New Year's Day. Let me know in the comments below. What do you make on Christmas Day? What do you do with your leftover roast dinners, your leftover Christmas dinners? Are you a bubble to squeak fan? Is it turkey butties for the rest of the week? Turkey curry? That's always a go to for a lot of people. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like I said before, I hope you had an amazing Christmas and have an absolutely amazing New Year. Although, I think I might drop another video before New Year. I think it might be the end of the month, grocery haul, budget, how much did we spend over Christmas haul. So take a look out for that one and I'll see you next time.